Hi, welcome to Topology MA342. This is lecture 16. Um, so the first thing I should say is uh, I sent out an email this morning to those people who'd requested uh, membership of a team for the project. So so hopefully you, you got you got that, the, the people who, who asked to be put into teams. I just did it arbitrarily. Um, so, you know, do, do remember then that um, this project, uh, you should work in groups of two or three, not one and not four. Um, and produce a project on your favorite topic in topology which complements the material in the, the syllabus, in the lectures, and which is aimed at uh, broadening the understanding uh, of topology of, of your peer group. Okay, so it's you're writing for your peer group, you're not writing for me or for a professor of topology, you're writing for students in MA342, something which is interesting and which will broaden their understanding and appreciation of topology. That's that's the that's the game. Um, any questions on on the pro project? I think that the deadline was going to be the end of the you know the last week of semester for that. But any 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 questions on the project? Do do start to think about it now over Easter, and you know because there's not a lot of time. You know, time go, go, goes um, flies by. So, um, okay, if there are no questions on that, then I'll start talking about uh, what I want to talk about today. So, um, let me begin by reminding you what I did at the very end of uh, uh, last the last lecture. I talked about a triangulation. So let me just write of of a sp of a topological space. So let me write down that definition again. Uh, so we had this last lecture. A triangulation uh, of a topological space X. Yeah, is a precise formulation of me saying, you know, divide the surface of Mars into uh, triangular fields or divide the surface of a torus into triangular fields or something like that. So, so, so I've been talking uh, a bit hand wavy, but now I'm, I'm able to be very precise what I mean by you know, dividing something into triangular fields. So a triangulation of a, any topological space X, what does it consist of? Well, it consists of A simplicial complex which I'll call K. So rem remember then that a simplicial complex uh, involves vertices and edges and two simplices which are kind of solid triangles and three simplices which are solid tetrahedron and four simplices, five simplices and it's the union in a nice in a nice fashion. Okay so uh, we had that last time. So uh, a triangulation involves a simplicial complex K, which we can actually think of as a topological space because it's a union of, of simplices, um, together with a homeomorphism, which I'll call H, from the topological space, you know, underlying the simplicial complex, to X. So that's the definition I gave it last time. Uh, what I need to do is some examples because it's quite a, a tough def definition to digest. Let's let's work on some examples. Uh, black. Um, so here's here's the first example. Let me consider a topological space. So let's consider the circle. Suppose that we take the topological space X uh, uh, to be the circle. In other words, let's define the circle as all of those complex numbers whose modulus is of size 1. Yeah, so a circle in the complex plane. Um, now I want to give a triangulation of that. So what do I have to do? I have to somehow find, a, 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 if I can, uh, a simplicial comp not every space is triangulable, but I have to find a if I can find a simplicial complex K, which is homeomorphic to the circle. So how about the following? 
Consider the following simplicial complex. Now I've got many examples I could take of simplicial complexes that would do here. Uh, let me let me let me take some points, some vertices. Yeah, let me take some edges, and there I have uh, what in second year you might have called a graph, but now I'm calling it a simplicial complex. It consists just of vertices and edges zero simplices and one simplices, nothing else. Not um, that's a topological space. And uh, this is actually homeomorphic to the circle. You can imagine this uh, simplicial complex lying in the plane. You can imagine the circle around it. And then to get the hom to get the homotopy equivalence, what you can do is take rays from the origin outwards and just slide every point on this simplicial complex out till you hit the circle. So you deform it out, and it, it's you you get a homeomorphism uh, between that simplicial complex and the circle. I think I've already proved in a previous lecture that the square was it or something like that. The square is homeomorphic to a circle. Well, the same proof works here. Um, so there is a homeomorphism. H from this simplicial complex, this hexagon, to the circle. So this is an example of a triangulation of the circle. Yeah, there's, a, there's an easy example. Let me do a, a, a slightly more challenging example. Um, let, let, me now, let me now consider the torus. Okay, we've met the torus in previous lectures and on the homework sheet. So this will be my second example. Um, let me give you a triangulation of the torus. The hollow torus. I mean, I don't say hollow, I, people just call it a torus. So what's a torus? A torus is the surface of a donut or it's a, 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 an inner tube of a, of a car tire. It looks like this. So that's a torus. One way to think of a torus, I mean, if we want, we can think of it as a circle, direct product a circle. Because really, what I well, how do I get a torus? I take a circle, direct product, and edge, which gives me a cylinder, and then I bend the ends of the cylinder around to get the torus. Um, or maybe for this particular example, a better way of thinking of the torus is as follows. I can think of the torus as being obtained from a, a rectangular piece of paper square, I suppose it could even be a, a rectangular piece of paper. Simply by identifying opposite points on those sides. So for example, where my pen is hovering now, that point, I identify it with this point, they're one of the same point, and over here I identify that point with this point. You've done questions like this on the homework. And we can also take this edge, I'll put two arrows there, and identify opposite points this way. So this point where my pen is hovering gets identified with this point over here and so on. So again it's 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 a you know identifying the horizontal edges gives me a cylinder and then I identify the the the, the other edges and it gives me the torus. So that's the way I'm going to think of the torus. It's a topological space. Um, now I want to give it a, a triangulation. So I'd better give it some, some vertices. Well, let me give it a vertex there. In fact, see that red vertex? 
that's actually the same as that point there, isn't it? Because we're identifying opposite points. And in fact, this red point here, this vertex, uh, is the same as that point there. So I've, what I've actually drawn there, those four dots, they actually represent one vertex on this torus. It's one vertex. But let me put in a few more vertices. Yeah. So now I've got a bunch of vertices. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go wild. I'm gonna put in some more again. So there, I've I've chosen some vertices on this 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 uh, torus, and now I'm gonna choose some edges. So maybe I'll change color. Um, in addition to these edges that I already have around the boundary of what I've drawn, I'm gonna draw these edges. Oh, I. I, I some more vertices over here um, and then I'll draw these edges and I'll draw those edges it doesn't look at all yet like a simplicial complex because there are no I've got edges but I've got no triangles I've got no two simplices well I can fix that by sticking in some more edges here maybe I'll do it like this And what I've pictured there is a bunch of vertices, a bunch of edges drawn either in green or black, and then the the, the two simplices. Every I haven't coloured them in, but but uh, you know the interior is is you know every interior of the triangle is filled in as well. I, I won't I won't draw it because it'll just confuse the picture. But but it, you know it, it, those are solid triangles that I've drawn. And that, if you think about it, is a simplicial complex that I've drawn. But it is homeomorphic to the torus because I've explained in a nice pictorial way what the homeomorphism is. Uh, which point of the simplicial complex, wh what point of the torus does a given point of the simplicial complex get sent to? Well, take a vertex here of my simplicial complex. It gets mapped to that point on the torus because what I started with was the torus. So the way I've drawn it like this gives you the homeomorphism between the simplicial complex and the torus. Now that might be challenging to digest if it's the first time you've seen it, which it, it is. Um, to help us digest it, let's do some counting. Let me... Um, let me take... Uh, how many v v vertices? So, so firstly, let me say then, this describes uh, a simplicial complex homeomorphic to the torus. Maybe I'll just leave it like that for the moment. So this describes a simplicial complex consisting of uh, vertices, edges, and two simplices, uh, which is homeomorphic. to the torus. Any questions on that example? I'll come back to it in a moment, but why am I introducing triangulations? Well, it's because I want to, if I can, if my pen works, now something's happened here. Yep. I want to talk about um, Euler characteristic. Um, so let me in general, uh, do the following. So, in general, for a simplicial complex K, um, we let Alpha, I'll write alpha zero, denote the number of vertices of the simplicial complex. We let alpha one, or I'm going to use this notation, 
denote the number of one simplices or edges of the simplicial complex. And I'm going to let, uh, in general, alpha 2 denote the number of two simplices. And in general, alpha k will denote the number of k simplices. of the simplicial complex. Yeah, so let me go back. Who can tell me, so I'll try to wake people up, who can tell me how many red vertices I have in this simplicial complex I've drawn there. Remembering that I've identified opposite edges, how many vertices, so, so while you're counting, how many red vertices have I got there? How many? Um, I suppose I'm doing this in black. Can anybody tell me Somebody says nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I agree, because I don't have to count these down here, because I've already counted them on this edge, and I don't have to count the ones on the bottom edge. So I've just got nine vertices. Yep. So you don't need the question mark. It, you're right, it's nine. Um, more demanding then. How many edges do I have in this example? Um, Sorry, I don't get that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, okay, I, that, that's a good... So, let me just go back to, to explain what I was doing. This torus, okay, which is... It's a cylinder, it's a, it's a hollow can, a tube, brought together with the ends joined. So that's what a torus is. It's the, the surface of a donut, whatever you're going to call it. And the way that I'm going to think of a torus is how would you make it out of a piece of paper? So this uh, rectangle or square piece of paper over here, drawn in black, I can make into a torus by identifying, gluing this edge up here where my cursor is moving, if I do this, this edge here with the edge down here. Namely, this point here where I'm hovering over is identified with this point on there. And this point here is identified with, I mean, I do that all the way around. And identifying top and bottom edges gives me a, a cylinder. But now when I'm counting, this vertex here is the same as that vertex there, so I don't count it twice. There's only It's only one. I mean, on the torus, it's only one of them. And this vertex here is the same as that, so there's only one. So I only count... Uh, and this vertex here is the same as that, and so on. And I'm also identifying the vertical, the points on the vertical edge with their opposite points on this edge here. So this vertex is identified with that vertex, so I don't count it twice. So basically, the, the points I count are, the vertices are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because all the others are already counted, so there are 9. Yep, so how about the number of edges? Does anybody work out the number of edges while I was explaining that again? Number of edges. Somebody says 27. Uh, I think I'll go along with that. One, two, three on the top. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't need to go to the bottom because I've already counted them. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's grand. And I don't need to count those vertical ones. And then I've got 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So I agree it's 27. And how many two simplices? How many two simplices? How many triangles? Distinct triangles on my torus. Um, the triangles have to be convex. Well, that's a good question, yeah. In a simplicial complex, the triangles have to be convex, and you're absolutely right, they don't seem to be convex, they're not. So that's a really good question, okay, because it, it, it makes me explain what I need to explain. What I'm drawing here is two things. I'm drawing a torus, okay? So here's a torus represented with, so that's a torus. I'm also giving you a simplicial complex, which really, if I give you a simplicial complex, I only have to tell you what are the vertices how many vertices are there? How many edges are there? How many triangles? And how do they fit together? So I've given you that information. But I also want to... I'm giving you a triangulation. So I have to give you, in some kind of slick fashion, a homeomorphism from this simplicial complex that I'm trying to describe to the, to the torus. I mean, the, the torus. I'm trying to give you a, a homeomorphism. So how on earth am I going to give you a homeomorphism? I have to give you, on the one hand, a simplicial complex, and I have to say... What 
point does this vertex of the simplicial complex get mapped to on the torus? What point does, or what, you know, what does this edge of the simplicial complex, this convex straight edge, get mapped to? So I'm actually drawing my, my simplicial complex, I'm drawing an image of it bent over, curving around the, you know, on, on the torus. That's why things are curved. So really, the simplicial complex, things are convex, and what I'm drawing is their image on the, on the, on the, on the torus. I, is that an explanation? It takes a bit of thinking about, but that's what I'm trying to do. So they're not convex, what I'm drawing here, they're images under a homeomorphism. Now you think about it. Um, so how many, how many triangles modulo that, that comment? You know, how many triangles have we got here? How many solid, how many solid two, two simplices have we got? Anybody give me an answer? Somebody says 18. I think it's 18, isn't it? Because there's, there's, there, there are nine squares and there's two. There's 18. There are 18. So I hope that counting uh, vertices, edges, and triangles help us understand this example, that what I've given you there in a very slick fashion is I've given you a, a simplicial complex. I've given you a simplicial, I'll, I'll do it in, in a different color, um, uh, I don't know, um, green. I've given you a, oh, no, not green, I'll give you, do it in orange. I've given you a simplicial complex and I've given you the torus, which I'm calling S1 cross S1 for, and I've, what I've actually given you, what I've really, what this picture gives you is if you like the graph of a function. So you literally just count, yeah, you literally just count the triangles. That's right, because no two triangles coincide. Um, and what I've described in that picture is a homeomorphism. So it's like, you know, when I say uh, sketch the graph of x squared and you just draw x squared. Well, what is x squared? I mean, it's, you know, I'm, you, you picture the function with a nice graph. And what I've done is I've pictured this function, this homeomorphism, by this nice picture, this nice, I don't want to say graph, but yeah. Okay, so we've got 9, 27, and 18. Uh, let me go down then. Why, do I, why am I talking about vertices simply? Uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to um, tell you uh, uh, that we define the, which you already know, we define the Euler characteristic of a simplicial complex. of a simplicial complex um, to be, and I'll use the letter chi, that's not an X, that's a chi, I'm not very good at writing Greek, Greek. Um, that's a chi of the simplicial complex K, and it's just going to be the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of um, uh, two simplices, minus the number of three simplices, there may be none at all, you know, plus the number of four simplices, minus the number of, and so on. And that's, uh, that's how, you know, that's the definition of the Euler characteristic of a simplicial complex. Um, What's the definition of the Euler characteristic of a topological space? Well, that's really what I want to get across. Um, so I'll put it down here in a different color, blue. Definition. No, let me go to blue. Change color a bit. Blue definition. Um, given a topological space X, which might be something which is not at all convex, or it might be a torus or something, given a topological space X uh, with a triangulation, which I'll call H, which goes from a simplicial complex, it's, it's a homeomorphism from a simplicial complex to X. Yeah. Um, we define the Euler characteristic, given that we define the 
Euler characteristic of x to be, well, what's the Euler characteristic of my topological space? We define it to be the Euler characteristic of the simplicial complex involved in the triangulation. So that's the definition that I actually used in lecture one of the course, uh, but now we have it much more precise, okay? Because in the lecture one, I couldn't say what a homeomorphism is, I couldn't say what a topological space is, I couldn't say what a simplicial complex is, so I had to say, you know, you're on bars and you have villages and expressways and um, f fields and so on. Uh, I'm a little bit more restrictive here. I've, I've insisted that all my fields are triangles in this de definition, but, but apart from that, you know, it, it's, it's rigorous. So at least we've got there. We've got to a rigorous definition of the Euler characteristic. Um, there's something that's, uh, that, that needs to be said. What happens if I take two different triangulations of a topological space? Will I get the same Euler characteristic? Because here I say the Euler characteristic of X, my torus, is the Euler characteristic of any triangulation you care to construct. Now there's many ways you could construct a triangulation, and that's an issue, uh, and it's a theorem, and I'll say a bit more about it, uh, that, yep, it, it, it is well defined. It doesn't matter which triangulation you take, you get the same answer. But I'll say more about that uh, in a moment. Let's just go back and work out the Euler characteristic of the torus. So the Euler characteristic of the torus, I'll do it in black now. So the Euler characteristic of the torus, I guess that's what I want to do, isn't it? The Euler characteristic of the torus, Ooh, a thin pen, please. The Euler characteristic of a torus, how do we do it? Well, first of all, we have to construct some triangulation. I've just done it. Um, for the given triangulation, count the number of vertices, subtract from it the number of edges, add to it the number of two simplices, subtract from it the number of three simplices, but in this simplicial complex there are no three simplices, so everything else is zero. Yep. So I just get that, so 9 minus 27 plus 18 is zero. So after all that, we calculated the Euler characteristic of torus. Um, any questions? Any more questions, I should say. That gives me the opportunity to sup some coffee. No. Then, I think what I should do now is I should be a a bad student of topology and make some mistakes. So let me make some mistakes. Let me give you something which is not a triangulation. Um, in fact, what I'll do is maybe I'll give you something which is not a triangulation and I'll ask you to tell me why it isn't, okay? So here's, I'll call it an example. Um, this is not a triangulation of the torus. Yep. This is a tricky. This is a tricky question. Now, why isn't it? So let me let's suppose then that I want to uh, calculate the Euler characteristic of a torus again, and I take a look at this example and I say, why on earth do you have so many triangles and edges? That's very wasteful, you know. Uh, let's do it more efficiently. So let me do it more efficiently, but wrong. Um, let me take my piece of paper from which I construct the, the torus. So it's the same piece of paper and the points on the bottom edge are identified with the corresponding points on the top edge and this vertical edge is glued to, to this edge. So that's my torus again. But this time, let's just use fewer, altogether fewer vertices.
Isn't that better? That's a much better. And just out of curiosity, um, well, whatever I've drawn there, um, yeah. Why isn't that a triangulation? I mean, I mean, I could. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write down something which is really wrong now. So don't, don't write this down because this is just wrong. I'll do it in pink. This is really wrong. You know, I, I'm in, in a rush in an exam and I write this triangulation. I say, well, there's all of these corners are the same, so there's just two vertices. And how many edges? Well, there's this edge is the same as that. There's one. There's just two edges. Um, uh, how many triangles? There's four, is it? There's four triangles. One, two, three, four. Oh, no. How many edges? I got it wrong. Sorry. Uh, how many edges? Is There's two, three, four, five, six. Um... And how many uh, uh, fields? Four. So I get the answer zero. Now, what should the answer be? Yeah, okay, the answer should be zero because I just did it somewhere there. So I get the right answer. But it is the wrong, it's wrong. I get zero. Ma how does that make a torus? Oh, it makes a torus because I identify opposite sides. Yeah? But my question is even though I get the right answer, we're mathematicians now, we're not just calculators, we, you know, it's wrong. Even though I get the right answer, this method is, well, it's not a triangulation. Maybe it's too strong to say it's wrong, but this is not a triangulation. Um, so let's just put that in kind of our thought. Yeah, okay, it's the right answer, which maybe is interesting, but this is not a triangulation. But why? Can anybody tell me, is there, are, are there not three vertices there? Well, no, I see. I only see two vertices. I only see this vertex in the. Uh, let me use this. I see this vertex, which is the same as that one, because I'm identifying opposite edges. But this one is the same as this one. Yeah. And this one is the same as that one. So these corner ones are all the same. Uh, but there's one in the middle. So I only have two vertices. Yeah, no need to say sorry. I mean, that, that's helpful. Okay, these questions are helpful. Um, what. Uh, but why isn't it a why isn't it a a, a triangulation? Why haven't I drawn a, a, sim, a simplicial co I, this doesn't correspond to a simplicial complex? Can anybody give me the re a, a reason? A simplicial complex has to consist of vertices, edges, which are straight line segments, convex holes of two 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 points, uh, triangles. So why isn't this? You know why haven't this isn't the image of a of a simplicial complex? That's right. There are no well, uh, at least yeah. I mean there there are no triangles. There aren't really any. There aren't really any one word sim simplices. Because look, uh, this well this edge here. See this edge here. That edge, how many how many boundary vertices does this edge have? Where my pen is hovering. It's just got one, hasn't it? You can't have the convex hole. You can't have a straight line segment with just one boundary vertex. Yeah, it would be a loop, that's not a straight line segment. So there's not even that's not even an edge. Uh, there is no one simplex with just one vertex. And and you're right, there the, there's problem with triangles as well. So uh, there are there is no one simplex yeah because the one simplex is a convex on the two points so th i'm thinking of this edge down here where my pen is hovering that's not really the image of a one simplex because there's not there are two vertices the, or this is not a homeomorphism a homeomorphism has to take distinct points to distinct points it has to be one to one so this, this can't be the uh, you know um, this isn't homeomorphic to a even a, 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 a an edge because it's only got one vertex. There's no one simplex with just one vertex. And somebody wrote in the chat about triangles. I mean, how many, um, you know, this triangle here where my pen is hovering actually only has two vertices. So there's not, there's no two simplex with just two vertices.
So this is not a triangulation that I've drawn. On the other hand, I seem to get the right answer, and that leads on to interesting mathematics, which we won't be able to talk about in the course. But um, yeah, so now what I want to talk about is this issue. If I take a topological space, a sphere or a torus, and if I take different triangulations, will I? Am I sure that I'll really get the same Euler characteristic? Because the Euler characteristic, you know, when I talked about the surface of Mars with you in lecture one, the Euler characteristic was says, you go away and however you like, draw your villages, your expressways and your fields and count them all up and take V minus E plus F and everybody got two. Everybody who did the, the calculation, whatever, you know, arrangement of, and it's the same thing here, whatever, triangulation you take, are we sure that you really get the same Euler characteristic? Because if we don't, this is a useless definition. So let me write down a theorem. And this is um, the most profound theorem in the course that I'm going to talk about. Um, theorem. So if you're interested in deep mathematics, this is the deepest that we'll be getting. Um, so this is the most profound uh, in the course and it's the following if two simplicial complexes are homeomorphic so if two simplicial complexes K uh, and L are such that um, their underlying space, this is K, the topological space K, is homeomorphic to the topological space of L, then the Euler characteristic of the simplicial complex K equals, that number equals, the Euler characteristic of L. So, that's a deep theorem. And, you know, this course is only a finite number of lectures, you're all kind of grateful for that. Um, so how do I do when I'm, what do I do when I'm faced with a deep theorem? Well, I'm going to cheat, okay? This is the one cheat in the course. Well, it's not, it's not really a cheat, it's, it's a, what am I going to do with this theorem in the course? My aim is to, I can't prove it because it would take too many lectures and you'd all be yawning and all the rest. But I'm going to tell you all of the ingredients of the, the proof. So it's like, I'm not going to bake a cake, but I'm going to place in front of you the eggs and the sugar and the butter, and I'm going to show you what butter's like and what eggs are like. So I'm going to show you the ingredients. Um, because even the ingredients are quite surprising. There's an ingredient there, a magic ingredient that, you know, that we need, that we don't have so far. So I'm going to, I'm going to, the, the aim then is for me to tell you um, the ingredients of that theorem. So let me stop waffling and speed up a bit. Uh, um, okay, that, that, that's my that's my that's my aim. Um, but before before I go into that, let me do some more examples. I think I think I'll do one more example anyway of another another you know Euler characteristic. Let's work at the Euler characteristic um, of a Möbius band example. Do it in blue with a thin pen. Um, determine the Euler characteristic of the Möbius band.
So you've seen the, the uh, Mobius band in the, in the homework sheet. Um, so I'm just going to repeat what I did above. Um, I need to say, what's a, how do I get a Mobius band? I, I, I take a strip of paper. And what do I do? Um, the top and bottom edges I leave as they are, but this vertical edge I identify with this vertical edge in the following way. The points here at the top of this edge is identified with a point here at the bottom, and a point here in the middle is identified with a point here in the middle, and a point you know down the bottom is identified with the points up the top. So what I've done is I've twisted the piece of paper, and you've seen that in the in the in the in the homework anyway. So what I need to do now is I need to construct uh, an Euler uh, uh, triangulation. So I better put some vertices down. Let me see if I can do a triangulation for you. And then I'll just ask you to tell me um, so that's a triangulation and there's a solid triangle there a solid triangle there two simplex two simplex that's a triangulation of the Mobius band so help me um, uh, alpha zero how many vertices are there can anybody tell me in the chat how many vertices in this triangulation No answer. Somebody says four. Uh, one, two, three, four. I agree. It's four. Four. How many edges in that triangulation? How many edges? No, there's... there's, there's, there's it's a Merbi I'm not identifying the top and the bottom. The Merbius band is yeah. How many edges? Somebody says five. I don't know. I've got one edge here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I get eight edges. Eight. Yeah, I agree with you. Eight. And how many uh, triangles? How many two simplices? I'll squeeze it in here. How many triangles? That's easy. I can see the number of triangles. There's just yeah. Uh, the number of triangles is just four. So the Euler characteristic of a Merbius band. Is we've constructed a triangulation, so it's the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of uh, two simplices, which again is zero. Gosh, does everything have Euler characteristic zero? No, because we've already seen that the surface of Mars doesn't. Um, okay, so that's those are examples. Now, I've got five minutes. Um, uh, maybe I just quickly recall the surface of Mars, um, the Euler characteristic of the surface of Mars, the two sphere, is equal to two. We've seen that, so I'm not going to go through that again. Um, okay, let me just talk a little bit about this main theorem, which uh, the next few lectures I'm going to be introducing the ingredients uh, needed for it. Well, the early attempts at that theorem and this theorem is a difficult theorem. I mean, it took mathematicians, well, I don't know, I mean, you could almost say centuries to get a proper proof of it. Um, the, the, the proof came in the early 20th century. Um, so this theorem, the early attempts at proving it uh, were, went as follows. They said, well, let's just prove that if you have two simplicial complexes, K and L, and if they're homeomorphic, then you can somehow subdivide the triangulation or subtriangulate one and subtriangulate the other till you get a common simplicial complex. So let me explain that in, in, in pictures. Okay, so early attempts. So, so um, I'm going back to the, the um, early attempts. At proving the above theorem um, focused on something which these days is just uh, called the 
the Hauptvermutung. It focused on the Hauptvermutung. Let me, let me use a different color. Haupt, like Hauptbahnhof. Hauptvermutung. So a Vermutung is a conjecture, something that we think might be true, but we're looking for a proof. And a Hauptvermutung is like a Hauptbahnhof, the, the main conjecture. So there's this thing called the Hauptvermutung. Um, it was probably called the, the Hauptvermutung, the combinatorischen topologie, the, the principal conjecture in combinatorial topology, but it became so famous that everybody just called it the Hauptvermutung, whatever language you're in, it's just called the Hauptvermutung. Yep. So, um, and what is it? Well, it says this. The Hauptvermutung, people said, well, if you can prove this, then the above theorem is easy to prove. So what, what they decided they needed to prove was this. If K and L... Uh, are triangulations of some topological space X, then there are subdivisions. I'll, I'll give an example of what I mean by this. Subdivisions, subdivisions. Uh, k prime of k and l prime of l uh, such that this subdivision equals that subdivision so for that to make sense for the for that conjecture to make sense i have to explain better what i mean by a subdivision let me just do it by means of an example suppose that i had um, this simplicial complex Suppose I had a simplicial complex, um, this is my K. Um, that's my simplicial complex. That's my simplicial complex K. And let's suppose that, so that's homeomorphic to a, a, a square, solid square piece of paper. Let me draw another simplicial complex. Homeomorphic to a square piece of paper. Um, this is another simplicial complex, homeomorphic to a square piece of paper. Yeah, well, they're all filled in triangles. Well, what? So the Hauptvermutung says that there should be a subdivision uh, of this, which and of this. Uh, that there's a subdivision of this which equals a subdivision of that. So what does that look like? What do I mean by a subdivision? Um, I'll do it as follows. Let me draw this the L because L is the... Yeah. Now I've just drawn L again for the moment, um, and I'm going to think of you know the, these corner vertices as being these corner vertices. So, um, not every um, I, I'm not really. I, this isn't a subdivision of this because see this diagonal edge here, that doesn't. Uh, exist here. But if I stick that diagonal edge in, I end up with a simplicial complex. And how did I get this simplicial complex? Well, I just kind of subdivided. I subdivided, you know, this triangle I made two triangles, this triangle I made two triangles, these, um, this triangle I made into two, this one I made into two. Uh, and I, I get, just by subdividing the triangles, I get this subdivision. But this is also a subdivision of this, because what I could do is I could put in, uh, I could subdivide that triangle, and then I could subdivide again. This is also a subdivision of K. And so you get, in this case, that it is true that uh, a subdivision of K equals a subdivision of L. Okay, so just t two minutes and I stop. So that's the Hauptvermutung. So all you have to do is prove the Hauptvermutung uh, and the... Um, the uh, the main theorem is 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 proved. There's not much to it. But let me just finish up with a couple of comments. 
Um, the Hauptvermutung, Hauptvermutung is true, is provable, was proved, is, is not too difficult to prove, I don't think. Um, Um, for simplicial complexes, of dimension less than or equal to 2. So if you just take two-dimensional simplicial complexes, vertices, edges, triangles, the Hauptvermutung is true. And so you can prove this result about the Euler characteristic fairly easily. Um, in 1961, John Milner proved that the Hauptvermutung is false in general. for some simplicial complexes of dimension greater than or equal to 3. So, wow! This early attempt, uh, it took people a long time to realize that it's going to fail. It took them to 1961. But fortunately, in the early 20th century, and now I don't know what name to was, Hurevich comes to mind, but I don't really know. I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, uh, I don't know the name of the... But, but somebody had the brainwave of saying, let's try to prove something stronger. Let's use not homeomorphism, but something more magical, homotopy. And they, used, they proved a stronger result. In the early 20th century, I don't know, 19 between 1910 and 1920, um, this, this main theorem that I have above was proved, but using a different uh, process, uh, using homotopy. So what I'm going to do for the next few lectures is I'm going to tell you the ingredients, and in particular homotopy, uh, which is used to, to prove that, 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 that theorem. Okay, I've gone over by five minutes, so I'm going to stop. Thanks, thanks for listening, and uh, have, a good, have a good Easter. Yeah. Any questions, by the way? Anyway, so... And while you're thinking, if you have a question, I'm going to just stop recording. But if anybody has a question, 